you're tuned in to Can You Hear Me? Let's talk about mental health. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Can You Hear Me? Let's Talk About Mental Health. This is episode 12, Intersectional Mental Health. In this line of work, given the nature of our country's uh, current status, we continue to see an increase in inquiries for mental health services. We have over 186,000 deaths in the United States due to the coronavirus. We have continued civil unrest regarding systemic racism and police brutality. There are questions and situations regarding our democracy, particularly the election process. And we're dealing with a lot of social isolation due to this public health pandemic. These kinds of events are becoming difficult to navigate through these enduring times. For the next few podcast episodes, we'll talk to mental health professionals and advocates on how they are helping their clients and their communities. Our guest today is Ms. Alpana Chowdhury. She's the founder and owner of Wove Therapy in New York. We'll talk to her in just a moment. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. You are listening to Can You Hear Me? Let's Talk About Mental Health. And we have our guest with us today, and her name is Alpana Cheldry. She is a licensed mental health counselor, and she completed her uh, BA in psychology from Barnard College and her MA in counseling psychology from New York University. She has a background in applied psychology research, having presented at the Association for Psychological Sciences and managed projects funded by the U.S. Department of Education, National Institutes of Health, and the National Science Foundation. She is an active member of the New York Mental Health Counselors Association. Alpana founded Wove Therapy in 2018 as a response to the constant request for counseling that takes intersectionality and systems into account. Having worked with clients from all kinds of backgrounds and life experiences, Alpana recognizes the need to have an informed and open perspective in order to truly be present. Her approach is eclectic, caring, and incredibly honest. We'll find out more about what she does and what uh, compelled her to get in, involved in this field. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest for today, Ms. Alpana Cheldry. Alpana, welcome. Thank you so much, Stephanie. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, likewise. And what compelled you to get involved in the line of, uh, of psychotherapy or in psychology? Sure. I mean, generally speaking, I've always been fascinated by human beings. Uh, I'm a social person, um, like most people are by nature. Uh, people interest me, their stories interest me, um, and even their pain interests me and how people deal with pain and conflict um, and, and getting involved uh, at a professional level, a psychotherapeutic level, is deeply satisfying work to me. It's intellectual, it's emotional, it's intuitive. Um, and there's a lot I learn every day from my clients and the people I work with, the therapists that I work with. And that's also really enjoyable for me. Hmm. Interesting. Amazing. <laughs> now, were there any challenges that you had to overcome once you decided when you made the decision to say, you know what, I want to get involved in uh, psychotherapy, uh, were there any challenges that you had to overcome? Absolutely. And, you know, I don't want to speak for other therapists of color, but I will speak from my experience and say that even here in this very diverse, large city of New York that I practice out of, it is incredibly difficult. Uh, I think for anyone to get into the world of private practice, it's especially difficult if you are coming from a background that is uh, a minority. Um, 
someone that people do not think of in general for various reasons, everything from media to just what is common statistically in this city and in this country about who receives therapy, who gives therapy, um, their financial obstacles, uh, there are demographic obstacles. And when I first started and I decided to take this big leap into the world of private practice and, and being an you know, independent contractor and, and losing things like benefits and, you know, healthcare in this country is, um, there's much to be left desired, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a leap of faith and a leap of uh, lots of things to get into that, that business. And then once you do, you start to kind of notice the pressures um, of, of the field. Uh, you know, I just mentioned what people were looking for, who, who gives and receives therapy. There's a, there are ideas that people have that therapists like me really challenge. And when I first started out, uh, I didn't know how it was going to pan out. I thought maybe I had to cater to a certain type of client in order to stay in business or to make a business for myself. And over the years, the truth is what I've realized is not only is that not true, but that is not what's satisfying to me. And that is not what led me to this field to begin with. Uh, and so over the years, I've sort of tailored my work and my practice to fit um, the, the folks that I feel uh, closely aligned to uh, on, on personal and professional levels uh, and to therapists that, that I relate to as well. Oh, awesome. Now I can imagine giving the current situation of the, of the world, particularly in the U S that we're dealing with the global health pandemic. We're dealing with a lot of, uh, civil unrest, social unrest, uh, in terms of the uh, racism, we're dealing with all the politics, uh, with the upcoming election. I can imagine that you're probably receiving more inquiries about your practice, uh, or maybe more uh, interested, maybe your potential clients that may be that uh, are seeking services. How is it for you and your team of therapists during this pandemic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that is an accurate guess. We are seeing a, a significant uptick in inquiries about therapeutic services. And for us in our practice, a practice that is primarily by and for people with marginalized identities, whether that be race, ethnicity, religion, gender, sexual orientation, you name it, um, there, it, we're at a time now, I think, a, a function of generation, politics, sociopolitical um, goings on, where fortunately, I, th I think we're seeing more people grapple with the stigmas of seeking therapy and reaching out anyway. And especially when they see therapists who look like them, who talk like them. Um, who sound like them, that there is more of an entry point for some people who maybe traditionally wouldn't have sought therapy or had tried it and maybe felt as though they didn't make a connection, that they're finding those connections and practices like ours, like Wove and other practices that are coming up and doing really, really great, amazing work. Uh, and, you know, this year in particular being one of rampant social isolation juxtaposed with uh, a lot of social movement, this is an opportune time for folks to reach out and connect and maybe start to deal with a lot of um, direct trauma, intergenerational trauma, vicarious trauma that they may be going through with a trained professional and someone they could potentially connect with on a personal level. Wow, uh, that is amazing because I I sometimes hear the term, I think it's culturally competent when mm -hmm. it comes to looking for a therapist that uh, that may be, there may be someone that looks like you and me or that, mm -hmm. okay, that I'm, I'm hearing that term a little bit more now mm -hmm. probably than I would have in the past that, you know, mm -hmm. we're looking for someone that's culturally competent that may be able to uh, facilitate 
uh, the, you know, the therapy sessions and, and really uh, get to know that individual in terms of when they're seeking for help, which, uh, which I think is pretty amazing. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Um, it's funny that that phrase culturally competent or cultural competence, I actually like to reframe that a little bit. Um, from my perspective, and, and what I think a lot of the therapists in our group, the way we approach a person, we try to keep such an open mind that in in our from where we're coming from, we don't believe we could ever be 100% competent to have a competency in someone else's culture, because that's the thing about culture and identity. It is so dynamic and so unique to a person and unique to their histories and their, their family's histories and those stories and all the intersections and layers of what makes a person them and what, how they deal and relate to the world is, is so complex and sophisticated that we almost like to think of it more as just um, someone who's tuning into the way a person identifies. And even that identity can change over time or depending on what their relationships are or, or the events in the world. Now, was there anything that uh, that I didn't ask? Are there any projects that maybe that you and your team might be dealing with? Or um, is there maybe some future expansion of services? Um, and also, how is it that our listeners can connect with you and your team? Sure. We are um, reachable the best way to reach us is through our website, which is wovetherapy.com. And on that website, you will find a lot of information about our team, the mission of our team. Uh, we have expanded um, just this past year. We've added three members to the team, which was something I didn't anticipate doing. But to your point, uh, the need is growing and you know, as more folks feel empowered to seek out therapy from, from folks they believe they could have a meaningful connection with, um, we've tried to step up to, to meet that need, um, as are a lot of, you know, adjacent, uh, wonderful colleagues here in, in New York. Um, right now, we're doing exclusive teletherapy, uh, as it's not really safe to be sitting in a room with someone without masks, and there's so much information that that we want to capture in, in our sessions. Um, so we are, you know, located in New York state, which means we primarily work with folks who, you know, have some residence, uh, residential connection to New York. Um, and there's a contact form on the website. You can reach us through um, in terms of special projects, uh, you know, we've we've tried to outreach, do a lot of outreach through social media, through through Instagram, which is this kind of amazing world of what's become educational, opinion, political um, activism. Mm -hmm. And you know, it sounds almost silly to say that that something like Instagram, which is also used for many non. Uh, activist related <laughs> things, which is totally fine. Um, but it could be a powerful tool. And it's a, it's a tool we use to connect with, with people um, to the masses and to other colleagues and professionals that, that we believe in their work. Um, and so that's become important to us, especially during this time of lack of physical connection. Uh, and we've also seen an uptick in uh, various corporate organizations who are seeking to do right by their employees and offer support for their employees, especially Black employees, um, being Black in America at this time um, well, it's always been traumatic, I, 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 would, I would add. Mm -hmm. But we are finding that some organizations are actually trying to do a little bit more work in that regard and engage with organizations like Wove Therapy to provide that kind of extra support for their employees. And that's been really interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we look forward to hearing more about that, more about Wove Therapy and the services that you all are providing for New York State. 
And definitely we want to stay in touch with you and your team and just to stay connected because we we plan to expand our programs and services and New York is definitely a, a state that we want to connect with. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I definitely appreciate you being a guest with our show today. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Alpana Chowdhury, New York, owner and founder of Wove Therapy. And uh, definitely this is, uh, again, we definitely want to stay in touch. Thank you so much, Stephanie. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Can You Hear Me? Let's Talk About Mental Health. Thanks for listening to the Can You Hear Me podcast. Be sure to visit MIPPLLC.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and find out more information about us. Until next time.